be a shame if our Indian neighbors became our enemies. If you've only helped them, then I will. The tide has turned. King's counting on you, Mr. Fraser. Right, can't it can't be two things at once, Claire. A rebel, a loyalist, agent for the crown, and an enemy of the king. You can't live your life afraid of being who you are. It feels like a long time, Droughtlander, this time, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it is the longest, yeah. But it'll be worth it. Absolutely. Um, now, I've seen the first couple of episodes, and I don't think it's a spoiler to say that we jump back a little bit first and we see Jamie at, in Ardsmuir. Mm. What was that like suddenly going, playing a bit younger? Is there a different wig? Yes. Yeah, well, well spotted, different wig, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we jump back to Ards Muir and, and see, you know, how the foundation of Jamie and Tom Christie's relationship. And I think, um, well, firstly, it's it's the joy of doing a time travel show and and I mean, getting to do flashbacks as well. But but uh, that's one of my favorite Jamie times as well. I mean, he's not expecting to be alive, really. He's not he's without Claire um and he's he's living in the memory of her um it it's hard in a way because you have to you know i created this mindset or character of jamie in that point of his life and, and played it you know a couple of years ago and then to go back and it's slightly changed you know the way he talks or he talks more or he's more open and i just it's an interesting thing so you have to adapt the character obviously to the situation but it was it was so fun to go back and to see where jamie and Tom's relationship started and the animosity between them or this the standoff between them. Um, so I really enjoyed it. And actually, it was the first thing we shot um, of the season, but then also became the last thing we shot because we had we had to reshoot it for various reasons. But it was the very, very last thing we shot of this whole season. So um, I don't know, in a way, it, it's uh, it's nice to revisit that that time. Uh, and that's what I love about Alanda that we get to do that kind of stuff. I mean, if it came up, would you be happy to put a, for them to dig out the wig or whatever it was for season one and be back to playing very young Jamie? <laughs> you never know. It might happen. <laughs> you never do with Outlander, do you? This is the thing. That's what's so great about the show. You know, we we also not only that, but you know, we're jumping time zones and, and hundreds of years, and we get to play. You know, we've had Claire in the '60s and '70s, um, and and Jamie. You know, I'd love to. I'd love to see that. Um, so yeah, it's that's what's so amazing about the show. And, and there are so many times we have these standalone episodes as well, where things are very different. So um, yeah, it's great. I mean, in this season, obviously um, the previous season ended and, you know, Claire had been through something so horrific and traumatic and it's being addressed in this season. But where do we find Jamie dealing with that? And obviously the arrival of the Christies. Yeah, so obviously, you know, what happened to Claire and Jamie's definitely very aware of, uh, of how that it, it could affect her. I think he's giving her space, but he's keeping an eye on her. But I, I think unfortunately his eye is also drawn. He's also got a lot of other things going on, not only the Christie's, which really begin to unsettle the status quo on the ridge, but also uh, his loyalty and the war is coming and he's been assigned an Indian agent and he has to go and work for the crown and he doesn't want to. So he's trying to find a way out there. So there's so much going on and yet also the family that everyone else in the family has also got a lot going on so really really the whole family is sort of beginning to fracture a bit and um i think that might take jamie's eye off the ball a little bit i, mean, I chatted to john bell a while ago and he said that with the covid restrictions that you guys had that it actually even though it was awful that it worked quite well because all your characters are quite isolated this season so almost the fact you were on set as well did you feel that at all? Yeah, I suppose, you know, in an interesting way, he's absolutely right. You know, we were, we were kind of isolated in our own little bubble. And, and you know, without giving away too many spoilers, but Jamie and Claire, you know, always been pretty popular. Jamie's especially, uh, certainly on the ridge, you know, he's, he's a great leader of men. He's essentially, in, in his own way, he's sort of the chief of, of the area in a sort of clan system. But, um, but that popularity really wanes and, and is really challenged by the Christie's. So um, it is interesting that Jamie and Claire do become uh, quite isolated. So 
yes, Mr. John Bell comes up with a good anecdote or a soundbite, and I shall be using that myself. <laughs> You'll be stealing that. Right, steal that one. <laughs> I mean, for you personally, I mean, obviously, there were you were filming in a pandemic, but were there was there a particular scene that was very hard, or was it just a general challenge of filming in a pandemic? Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, I don't want to say it, you know there were people going through a lot worse than us, but but it but it was challenging. Yeah, of course, you know, from um, from budget wise, you know, the, the show had to spend a great deal of its budget on on the COVID protocols and keeping everyone safe, but also. Just being on set, you know, uh, there's a heightened awareness. I think it's always in the back of your mind. Um, and we were trying to make sure that that didn't creep into the show itself, you know. And I think, you know, when you're trying to create a relationship with someone, it's very hard when you've got a mask on, you know, or you have to keep distance between someone. So it took us some time. But once we got used to it, I think we fell back into our groove pretty quickly. And uh, I don't think it affected us, you know, uh, certainly not on screen. This is the first season that you had an intimacy coordinator on set. Yes. So um, I uh, suggested um, we get one after meeting uh, meeting her through the work I was doing with my um, uh, former drama school. I've been working with them and um, just found it, you know, it, it's a new thing, relatively new in the industry. Um, and obviously there's a great deal of intimacy on our show. And in a way, it kind of been left to Katrina and I to sort of work our way through. Um, and so obviously we've got a way of working and we've created this relationship. And But also we realized quite quickly when she came on board that that actually, you know, there was, it was a lot of, it's a lot of pressure. And she really helped us kind of work through those scenes. And also hopefully, which I think it really worked, is also maybe move the scenes on and maybe add more to 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 them that, that maybe we didn't know how to do in, in, in the past. So. It's been a really welcome addition, I think. Also for the younger actors that also have to do um, intimate scenes, I think um, it just takes out a lot of the pressure and uh, fear um, and really hopefully makes those scenes, I don't know, more enriched. I mean, I know without, obviously we can't spoil anything, but I know there's a, a scene with Fergus and Marsley in episode two. Yeah. And I thought, you know, that's really the first time they've actually, those two actors have had a scene like that, isn't mm. it? Whereas, you know, you and Katrina have, been doing it since season one for some yeah. of the other actors it is quite a new thing for them isn't it uh, i i think we i felt a great responsibility to the younger actors you know i know that we were in a different time you know uh, shows our show was a lot more um gratuitous not gratuitous but a, revealed an explicit should i say in some ways that it wouldn't be so now but still, you know, for young actors, it's or people that haven't done it, it can be very challenging. So I think I we wanted to support them, and I think you know our show is is very challenging in, in those things. And I think that's what's great about our show. It really questions uh, the audience or puts these characters in situations. But it can be hard for an actor to navigate. So I think um, yeah, I, I certainly felt responsibility to su support our cast, and not only that, the crew as well, and uh, and the writers. So we now know what the boundaries are but also how to explore those i mean do you find a scene like that is that more um tricky for you than maybe some big battle scene or something that's very complex i mean which is the one that when you sit in the script you think that's going to be tricky i think there's always an anticipation about the intimate scenes um because they're never easy um they are easier because of the relationship I have with my co-star, you know, Katrina, and I think um, also the sort of rapport we have with the crew, so they are easier. But yeah, they're they're, they're like a logistical challenge all, always, in the same way that a battle is. You know, it's always about working out the best way to approach this dilemma or this problem, and, and what's the end result. So I guess you approach them in, in a kind of similar way. And it's interesting that you know a, a battle will have a fight director, but you know, an intimate scene didn't have anyone. You have a director, of course, but they're not qualified per se for that specific thing. So, um, so I think it's really important, and I think it's a great addition. No, absolutely, it's a great idea. And um, I mean, you're going to be going back on set reasonably soon for season seven. Reasonably soon. Spring? Are you allowed to say? <laughs> I would say reasonably more soon. Reasonably soon. Okay. <laughs> um, now we know that at the moment there are nine books. There's probably Diana has always said there'd be ten. Yeah. Um, 
how I mean, obviously, you, you can't say how long it will go on for. Nobody knows how long it will go on for. But if you got a call tomorrow and they said, right, we're doing this many seasons and then Outlander is going to finish. How would you like it to end for Jamie and Claire? Forgetting about maybe Diana's plan, which I believe she's told you. Um, but how would you like to see that final scene of the final episode of Outlander? Ooh, wow. Um, God. Uh, you know, they just want a quiet life, don't they? <laughs> they just want to be alo left alone. You know, Jamie just, he's, he's, he wants to be surrounded by his family and by the loved ones and, and wants a, an easy time. It's never going to happen, is it? Let's face it, it's Outlander. So, um, <laughs> yes, I would like to see him in his rocking chair with Claire by his side. Um, yeah, with the family. Descendant of Adso on his lap. With Adso there and, yeah, and some good whiskey. But, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's never going to happen. 